Welcome to Cogito Shorts. In this video series, we'll be taking some bite-sized journeys into key elements of game design. In this episode, we'll be looking at two very different design philosophies. We'll be delving into the murky waters of the war between Euro and Ameritrash-style board games. The first thing to say on this topic is that I personally prefer not to use the term Ameritrash when referring to board games. The term Ameritrash was originally coined by fans of Euro-style games as a disparaging way to define those that took a differing approach to game design from the titles they loved. Whilst it has now essentially been reclaimed by lovers of this type of game, it feels a little bit rude to refer to games as Ameritrash, so I prefer to call these types of games thematic style board games. The second thing to be aware of with this distinction is that very few modern board games actually fall neatly into these categories. Whilst most games tend to favour one approach more than the other, modern games are generally more of a hybrid of the two design styles, borrowing from each. Which of course can often make products that are more than the sum of their parts, but more on that later. So what exactly do these terms mean? I think the key to understanding the difference between these terms is essentially to understand the design philosophy which underpins both systems. For a Euro-style game, the focus is generally on the mechanisms of a game, whilst for thematic-style games it is rather unsurprisingly on the theme. In Euro games, where conflicts arise between theme and mechanisms, mechanisms are prioritised, whereas in thematic games it's in reverse. This design philosophy may be the heart of the difference between these two styles of games, but it is perhaps a little too simplistic, so let's go into a little more detail. Firstly, we have Euro-style games. Euro games generally refer to a philosophy of game design which started in Germany in the 20th century, and is regarded as being the key to modern resurgence of interest in tabletop gaming. Euro-style games hold their mechanisms as the most valuable aspect of their design. They aim to limit randomness of all kinds, but particularly output randomness, giving players a chance to strategically build an engine from the clever choices they make throughout a game. Euro games tend to have limited player interactions in general, and particularly resist direct negative player interactions, and the dreaded take that mechanism. They also are very averse to player elimination as a mechanism in a game, preferring all players to be involved and potentially able to win until the very end. As Euro games focus primarily on mechanisms over theme, the themes of these games are often only loosely related to them, and this lack of interest in theme can often be noted in the use of artwork and components, which at times seem more of an afterthought, <coughs> Castles of Burgundy. Whilst Euro games can be very complex, the focus on mechanisms over theme means that they are often streamlined in their approach, and less fiddly than their more thematic counterparts. They regularly contain very satisfying gameplay and familiar mechanisms. They are usually designed to be played within specific timeframes, with games rarely lasting more than a couple of hours. Euro games generally have multiple paths to victory, which converge to gain you the iconic victory points, which are an ever-present reality of this style of game. These victory points are added together at the end of the game to decide the winner. Critics of Euro games will claim that they contain dry, repetitive mechanisms with limited surprise and excitement from unknown quantities, such as dice rolls. They say that these games can possess poor quality components and have loose connection between theme and mechanisms, meaning that in-game narratives are often lacking. They will also criticise the low player interactions seen in these games, often complaining this leads to feeling separated from your fellow players. The term multiplayer solitaire is used to describe games with this particular issue. So what about thematic games? These unsurprisingly focus more on accurately representing the theme of the game than a relentless pursuit of mechanical perfection. As such, they can be very vibrant in their choices of art and components, gone are the ever-present wooden cubes of the Euro-style games, and instead we have detailed plastic miniatures and even fancy deluxe metal components. Ooh, metal components. Countless cards feature dramatic artwork and multiple coexisting mechanisms try to accurately depict the narrative of the game's theme. 
Now, on the other hand, thematic games contain direct player-to-player -player combat and embrace the excitement of randomness, especially if it more closely resembles the game's theme. The randomness of dice rolls are relished in thematic game designs and player elimination is a terrifying possibility. Mechanisms in thematic games can feel very intuitive, being closely aligned with a the theme but are often not as satisfying to interact with than those in their Euro-style counterparts. Likewise, victory points are less prevalent in these games, with endings more often triggered by players achieving specific thematic in-game states. Critics of this style of game will complain that the multitude of mechanisms interact in a clumsy way, leading to fiddly and unsatisfying gameplay. They point out that the extravagant components can make thematic games overproduced and overpriced, and that the intense focus on narrative can make them unnecessarily long. A common complaint is that the overuse of randomness can make players' skill feel irrelevant, frustrating plans and allowing weaker players to gain undeserved victories. So which style of game should you make? Well, like most of the questions I ask on this channel, the answer is, it depends. The vast majority of modern games are actually hybrids of these two approaches, taking the best that each design philosophy has to offer and mitigating the issues they present. The modern classic Gloomhaven is a great example of this. Gloomhaven is a vast legacy style game, which is quite clearly dedicated to its theme. The world building in the game is extraordinary and the vast box contains a multitude of fabulous components, artwork and narratives. So it's a thematic game, right? Well, maybe not. The combat system of Gloomhaven was heavily marketed as being card driven and diceless. In fact, the mechanisms of the gameplay are clearly streamlined and a great focus of the experience. In Gloomhaven, it seems designer Isaac Childers wanted to create something that combined multiple elements of both Euro and thematic game design philosophies. Given its persistent status as the number one game on BoardGameGeek, this was very probably an excellent design choice. So, whilst Euro and thematic style games have blurred to the extent where it is now often very difficult to identify games as clearly one or the other, the terms do bring us to an interesting and persistent question about game design. When you're presented with a conflict between improving the mechanisms of a game or increasing its proximity to its theme, which do you think should be more important? Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Kogito short episode. To show your support, please like this video and subscribe to our channel, and maybe even check out our Patreon page, link below. On that note, thanks as always to our loyal patrons who help us create these videos. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.